Orlando Hernandez just now got back to the dugout after warming up in the bullpen. So the Yankees have yet to take the field prior to the start of game four. Orlando Hernandez, who missed two starts in April with a tender elbow, went on the disabled list in late May and inflamed toe on his left foot, the second toe on his left foot, had surgery June 15th. Didn't come back until August 21st. Gave up four home runs that night in Texas. And in the end, had a four and seven record during the regular season. But as we have mentioned, as Schilling thinks about tonight's start, Hernandez nine and two in his career in the postseason, one and one this year. And here come the Yankees. Take a look at Bob Friendly's lineup. For the Arizona Diamondbacks, Tony Womack leads it off. He's the shortstop. He is also hitless in this series. Great counsel back to the number two spot. Luis Gonzalez hitting third. Rubio Durazo moves up to the cleanup spot. He's the DH. Then it's Matt Williams, Steve Finley, Reggie Sanders, Mark Grace batting eighth. Damian Miller catching and batting ninth. Talk about how the Yankees have struggled. And is still... Not out on the mound yet. They're asking the home plate umpire if because of the temperature he'll be able to blow into the pitching hand to warm it up. Keep talking about the Yankees and their 144 team average. They've scored three runs. Arizona's hitting only 200, so pitching has certainly dominated this series. And Derek Jeter, who's in the leadoff spot tonight for the Yankees, is only one out of 11, all the way down that. Yankee lineup and now it's getting to be so for the Diamondbacks very few hits this postseason a record of one and one and ERA up over five he won game four of the division series out in Oakland he lost game three of the ALCS here against Seattle those are his numbers this season this is his scouting report what will determine the success of El Duque tonight will be how he handles left-handed batters. Four of the six left-handers have power in the Diamondback lineup. He's a fly ball pitcher with a short porch in right field, only 314 down the line, 385 in the gap. He better have late pop. If he doesn't, he could be in trouble as he tries to recapture that Houdini touch. Defensively for the Yankees, they have their best outfielder in the lineup again tonight. Shane Spencer, he made a diving catch in last night's game in the sixth inning to keep it a 1-1 game. The Yankees took the lead for good in the bottom of that sixth inning. Bernie Williams and Gold Glover in center field. Paul O'Neill is in right on the infield. Brocious, Jeter, Soriano, and Tino Martinez. Posada is catching Orlando Hernandez, who we've talked about in the past. On a 57-degree night. Wind out of the south at six miles per hour. Wind chill is 54 degrees, and out in Phoenix it's 83 degrees. And Bob Renly telling Kevin Kennedy and telling us prior to the game that last night, the game that Roger Clemens started, the weather conditions and the swirling wind had more to do with the dropped and missed pop-ups for the Diamondbacks as opposed to jitters playing in their first game at Yankee Stadium. We were saying last night, Halloween came early for Damian Miller in the fourth and sixth innings of last night's game. It was a debacle defensively for the D-backs. Say again what you said uh, during the stand-up portion of our broadcast, that Orlando Hernandez is pitching tonight. It figures to be his only start of this World Series, and depending on how he fares here tonight, it could color the decision to whether to bring him back to the Yankees next year. He was erratic this year. He's not to be depended on. To remind you that this broadcast is also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Next year, Roger Clemens will be 40. They may get a lot younger in their rotation next year, and they may end up trading away Orlando Hernandez. He is arbitration eligible this year. The Yankees may not give him a contract. This is a big start, obviously, for El Duque. And he starts it with a strike to Tony Womack. Go for 11 in this World Series. Only 188 overall in the postseason. One ball, one strike. The top of the screen, the Fox box. Runners on the top left-hand corner. The score, top of the first. Nobody out. The velocity 
of these pitches where the pitch count is recorded. Womack up the middle. That's his first hit of this series and a good start for Arizona. Tony Womack is on now one out of 12. See if the Diamondbacks can chase him home. Right over the head of Hernandez, the high chopper. He tried to barehand it. Not a good idea. Too high, however. And the Diamondbacks start the game with the right guy on base in Walmart. Remember in the third inning of game one, Greg Council bunted after he hit a home run. So we'll see what Bob Brinley does right here. Do you run Walmart or bunt with Council? See how confident they feel with Schilling working on three days rest right here as Tony Womack wants the third base coach Chris Spire to go through the signs again when Schilling is on full rest first inning with this combination Gonzalez and Durazo coming up you would expect the bunt. And the bunt third base side barehanded pick up which is great play. One out down to second is Womack, a runner in scoring position, and there's Brocious doing his thing again on the barehanded pickup. He's the best I've ever seen at this particular play. He picks it up with the ball in the throwing position. Index finger, middle finger, and thumb. That is a very difficult play to make for a third baseman, and Brocious does it almost routinely. So now an RBI opportunity for Luis Gonzalez with Durazo to follow. Gonzalez so far in this World Series, three out of 11 with a home run. Former Gold Glove Award winner, and he has done that. That play in particular since coming here to the Yankees his first year in 98. Gonzalez could put Arizona on top here in the first inning and give Kurt Schilling a lead. Now look back at Walmart. Luis Gonzalez drove home 142 runs during the regular season and hit 57 home runs. Oh. Staying away from Gonzalez with ball one. If you're on second base in this situation, the only player you don't know where he is is the shortstop. He's right behind you. That's why the third base coach will say, I've got the shortstop. The minute you get on second base, you check the depth of the outfielders so you know where they're playing. Peripherally, you see the runner or the third baseman, Scott Brocious. You know where Soriano, Martinez, the pitcher and the catcher are. The only guy who can come in behind you is Derek Jeter, the shortstop. That's why Chris Fire, the third base coach, has the shortstop. One ball, one strike on Gonzalez. And a throw anyway. Even though Jeter was nowhere near the bag. So Orlando Hernandez wheeled around and threw and somehow got the ball around the body of Womack and into the glove of Jeter, who was way off the base. Inside for ball two to Gonzalez, and that is certainly something to watch for early. You've made mention of this plenty with Orlando Hernandez. The ability to come inside effectively against left-handed batters. He's got to do it, and Joe Torre and Bell Stottlemyre have tried to encourage him to do just that. Come inside the left hand. Inside and fouled back by Gonzalez, especially Gonzalez, who strides into the pitch. Left-handers hit 278 against Hernandez this season. Gonzalez and he'll go down to first hit by the pitch on a 2 2 delivery and it's two on with one out. Second time Gonzalez has been hit a lot of times with that open stance when you stride to make it a closed stance which is proper with which to hit. You can't move as well. Bob Brinley was talking about that before the game. Watch Gonzalez close and now he can't get out of the way and the breaking ball hits him on the left angle. What we heard on that 2-2 delivery, this crowd get louder 
here in game four than at any point last night in game three. It took some people over two hours to get into Yankee Stadium last night because of the security measures. A little quicker this evening. The crowd appears more into it as the Diamondbacks are trying to take them right out of it here in the first inning with two on one out. A Ruby Eldorazo takes ball one. We were talking to Bob Brunley, and I brought up to Bob that I thought Durazo was the most dangerous batter in the lineup against the likes of El Duque. With all due respect to Luis Gonzalez, this is a pitcher that Durazo can hit. And with that short porch, dangerous situation already for the Yankees. Two on, one out. One ball, one strike. We've seen Hernandez now. Three left handed batters start the hitter with a pitch way up and away and then try to come back inside. That was in enough to get on the hands of Durazo. One ball, one strike. He did it to Womack. He did it to Luis Gonzalez. Now Durazo. The thing about uh, Hernandez in situations like this, he doesn't throw a lot of ground balls. So the double play normally is not in his arsenal. The double ground ball, double play ball. At some of the security personnel walking in that hitter's background. And now another one coming down. As Durazo waits for a 1 1 pitch. Inside on the hands and fouled back and out of play straight two. Matt Williams on deck. Swing two and two. Just about the same pitching pattern that Gonzalez faced against Hernandez. One two breaking ball down and in. Gonzalez got the breaking ball and he was hit with the pitch. Two on for Arizona here in the first inning. One out. Full count on Durazo. Brindley, a very aggressive manager. Expect the runners to run right here. in Bob Brindley's mind with a young hitter up there. A lot of times the animation and the activity on the bases makes a young hitter a little too anxious. So perhaps that's why they why Brindley kept the runners at second and first. So now it's Matt Williams with the bases loaded one out. Swinging the bat awfully well including his final at bat last night against Mariano Rivera. Swinging it well, so Bob Brenly put him in the number five spot. Base is loaded for him, one away here in the first inning. Strike one. Breaking ball against Williams. For their careers, right handed batters hitting only 193 against Hernandez. Series out in Oakland. Hernandez got into a second and third nobody out situation in the first inning and got out of it. Here he has the bases loaded, one out. Matt Williams at the plate. Hernandez and the Yankees won that game. 
final of nine to two. Strike two on Matt Williams. Two strikes on Gonzalez and Hernandez hit him. One and two on Durazo and El Duque walked him. One and two on Matt Williams with the bases loaded. can do to right-handed batters is drop down and make them give with that left side. Left-handers, uh-uh. The Diamondbacks trying to hand Kurt Schilling a first inning lead. Matt Williams with a 2-2 pitch. Full count. Comes back inside with the fastball that misses by a lot. Three balls, two strikes with the bases loaded, one out. No score in the first inning of game four. Do it again. is dropping down quite a bit here in the first inning. He has thrown 21 pitches more out of the strike zone than in it here in the first inning. The breaking ball. Missed with the fastball. 1-1 one, one pitch fouled away. Missed with the breaking ball. Missed with the fastball. Foul back, middle of the plate. Got him on the high leg. So now the bases are loaded with two out. And Steve Finley is at the plate. And in 333 in this postseason. Ball one. When a pitcher doesn't have confidence, he tries to be too fine. And that's what Hernandez is trying to be right now. Finley did not start in game two against Andy Pettit. Only one out of six in this series. Two balls, no strikes. Orlando Hernandez tends to clamp down with runners in scoring position this season. Runners in scoring position, opponents in 171 against him, lowest in the major leagues, and in this situation with two out, only 163. Pound the problems for Hernandez. Now that he's fallen behind Finley, 2-0. who played here as a member of the Padres back in 98 in the World Series. It's one for 12. In that effort against the Yankees. Here's a 2-0. Popped up, foul ball, and Posada will watch it go into the seats 2-1. El Duque got away with one then. Finley looking inside. He got it inside. And just missed it. Posada setting up inside on a 2-0 count. You don't jam hitters 
when you're behind in the count. That is something uh, Jorge Posada, in my view, has not learned yet. Often, he'll set up inside 2-1, 3-1, 1-0. Oh, not the time to jam hitters. Here's a 2-1 pitch now with the bases loaded, two out. And here is the Yankee Stadium crowd. Schilling's going to have to go back and warm up again. Tino Martinez, Jorge Posada, David Justice, the DA, Shane Spencer in left, Scott Brocious and Alfonso Soriano, the second baseman batting ninth. The numbers in the World Series ugly. You saw it, 144 with the average three runs total in three games. And here's Kurt Schilling. His numbers this postseason are fantastic. Similar to Roger Clemens, who pitched so well last night. High riding fastball and a great splitter. Jeter late with that swing, strike one. Jeter is one out of 11. And after having a great division series against Oakland, it has dragged his postseason average down to 239. He had only two hits during the ALCS. Overpowering for strike two. Power, power, power with Chuck. With Kurt Schilling. To give you an idea of how badly the Yankees are trying to score, Derek Jeter is hit in three different positions in four games. And shot caught. Lomack, one away. A time to jump by Lomack. Diamondbacks continue to pound Derek Jeter inside. Derek's mom and dad, as they often are, in attendance. Thinking that might get over the head of Tony Womack and landed in his glove, and Jeter leading off tonight. He could hit anywhere in this Yankee lineup. Is the first out for Kurt Schilling and now Paul O'Neill. O'Neill, two hits in last night's game, his first start of this series. The early indication on Kurt Schilling is he is throwing hard. 102 pitches in game one. A lot of people have made a lot about that figure. You should know that he averaged 105 pitches during the regular season per start. So about his average. He said after that start he felt terrific. And had been lobbying his manager Bob Brenly. He walked off the mound in the seventh inning in game one to start this night. Check swing ground ball. Womack. Five straight strikes from Kurt Schilling. All fastballs. He said power, power, power. Home run, Jess. He led the National League in home run shielding with 37 given up, but 31 were solo shots. Shoulder high heat and shoe high splitters. Shown the only the fastball thus far. So now it's Bernie Williams who's two out of ten. 
right in the middle of this Yankee lineup. Their offensive output has been anemic so far in this World Series. Two out, nobody on. A strike on the outside corner. Top of the order for New York, three out of 35 with seven strikeouts, 086 average for the first three hitters in the Yankee lineup combined. Four heat from Curtin Schilling, and that's all we've seen. 0 and 2 now on Williams. Seven straight fastballs to open the game. All strikes. Questions about Kurt Schilling starting on three days rest. Any more questions? Second inning, game four, no score. No score into the second inning. Reggie Sanders first up against Orlando Hernandez in the first pitch is on the inside corner. According to Ed Rapuano, the home plate umpire strike one. He took Hernandez 27 pitches to get through the first inning. It took Kurt Schilling eight. All strikes, all fastballs. Off the hands, out of play, 0-2. Sanders, who has been the cleanup hitter lately for Arizona, is now down in the number seven spot. We look at the first inning. Just enough strikes to keep Arizona off the scoreboard. Schilling was perfect. One ball, two strikes. Mark Grace is the number eight hitter. Damian Miller hits ninth. Those are the three scheduled hitters for Hernandez here in the second. to see Mark Grace hitting eight. It's been 13 years since he has batted eight in his days with the Chicago Cubs. First year, 1988, his manager that year, Don Zimmer. And scoring on that double was Ryan Sandberg. He had a terrific NLCS. Grace hit 647 against Giants pitching. Two are still very good friends, Mark Grace and Don Zimmer. Grayson Zimmer caught up around the batting cage before yesterday's game three. Mark Grace has just been in awe walking around Yankee Stadium. Grace, a guy who really understands and studies baseball's history, as does Kurt Schilling, tonight's Arizona starter. When Mark was growing up, he was in awe of Keith Hernandez, the great Met and Cardinal first baseman. He wore his number 37. When he was in high school, one out to Soriano. He can roll it. Wow. Two out of the inning, and the batter will be Damian Miller. A strikeout, a ground out. Joe Altabelli was one of the coaches with the Cubs when Grace first came up. He really worked with Grace, making him a better defensive first baseman. That is the flag we showed you here last night. That tattered and torn flag, which was recovered from the wreckage. Three days after the World Trade Center bombing. Tower 2 collapsed on that flag. Stars missing. It was ripped and torn, and it is known to be the only American flag flying that day at the World Trade Center. Local police officers had it, taking it around to the different funerals in the area for their fallen brothers and they thought it was a good idea for him to be here at Yankee Stadium for the middle three games of this World Series. Out in center field 
At the plate is Damian Miller set up at a ball and two strikes. The second, no score in game four. When you're in Arizona and you go to Bank One Ballpark and you go into the manager's office with Bob Brenly, he has a stereo system behind his chair at his desk. Christina Martinez leading off the bottom of the second, no score. Strike one. In that stereo system, it's a five CD chain. He's got two Led Zeppelin albums. He's got a Jethro Tull. He's got Tom Petty. One more. That's four. That's four out of five. You're hitting 800. Come on. It's all right. Dino Martinez grounds to the right of Council. One out. Friendly is a loose guy. And we always talk about Joe Torre and his ability to disarm a situation with a sense of humor. Here's an example of how Brenly does that with his catcher, Damian Miller, between it. Hey, when in doubt tonight, if there's any question in your mind what you want to throw, throw something low so they don't pop it up foul behind a player, okay? <laughs> Last night, Damian Miller had trouble on three different pop-ups because of the swirling winds. According to Damian during that little piece of tape, the wind is not as bad tonight as it was here last night. Ball one to Jorge Posada with one out, nobody on. Joe Walsh, that's the fit. Joe Walsh, yeah, from the Eagles. Yes. The guitar player from the Eagles. Right. Yeah. And the difference between the managers, you go into Joe Torre's office, and he had a stereo system in there. I don't think Zeppelin or Joe Walsh would be in the CD change. Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, Jerry Vale, right. Fabian, <laughs> Frankie Avalon, Eddie Layton plays the hits. Down the left field line for Gonzalez. Plenty of time to get to this one. Two up. Here's last night, Damian Miller staggering around behind the plate. That was not ruled an error. This was. And this was given to Mark Grace. The Diamondbacks committed three errors last night, four misplays. At one point, gave the Yankees six outs in an inning. That was in the fourth. The Yankees did not score that inning. As Justice takes a strike. That's how poor the Yankees are going offensively. They get six outs and don't score. And how tough Brian Anderson pitched last night Absolutely. for Arizona. Oh, yeah. What a I job. Him credit. Two out, nobody on, and a one ball, one strike count on David Justice. Bob Brindley telling us before the game that Damian's night last night, like a, a couple of afternoons he had as a catcher for the San Francisco Giants at Candlestick Park. What a tough sun and wind field candlestick was. Here's a 1 1 to Justice with two outs. Just outside, two balls and a strike. Kurt Schilling, who spoke to a group around the World Trade Center, we read a portion of a letter he wrote right after the tragic day of September the 11th during game one. Part of the group that went from the Arizona Diamondbacks to ground zero. Kurt Schilling, Randy Johnson, Luis Gonzalez, Mark Grace, a long list of players. Bob Brenly telling us that the firefighters, the police officers, the emergency workers there all had cell phones and would call home to their kids, their sons, their daughters, and put Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson on the phone. A treat for the kids. And they got a chance to talk to two of the best starters in the major leagues this year. And from one to the next. They stood there taking one cell phone call after another talking to the kids of the firefighters, rescue workers, and police officers at Ground Zero. Two out, nobody on. 2-2 pitch to David Justice. 
fouling him off as Schilling is living in the mid-90s. 94 miles per hour on that pitch. There is such a difference between the fastball and the splitter from Kurt Schilling. Almost like a bobblehead doll up there. Shoulder-high fastballs and shoe-high splitters. Got him on the outside corner. Justice becomes the second strikeout victim for Kurt Schilling. We go to the third. El Duque back to the hill. Still no score in game four. Just a devastating splitter by Kurt Schilling to get David Justice. As you see the split fingers. Watch the toppling effect. All one to Tony Womack leading off the third inning. Tony singled his first time up, up the middle, his first hit of this World Series. Council bunted him down to second. Gonzalez hit by a pitch and a 1 2 delivery that caught him on the foot. A walk to Durazo, but then Williams struck out. Finley popped up. It's 3 0 on Tony Womack. Ball four for a leadoff walk. If they were bunting in the first inning with the way Schilling's pitching tonight, expect the bunt here again in the third inning. Take another chance at having Gonzalez, DeRazo, and or Matt Williams bring Womack home. Yankees expect the bunt. They have Rocha's way in at third. Usually if a pitcher can't find the strike zone with the leadoff batter, if he throws four straight balls, usually it's not a good idea to run or to bunt on the first pitch. Give the pitcher a chance to get wild, as he was with Walmart. One to third, perfect. Brocious gets to use the glove this time, one out. And again, the sacrifice is good, 5-3. Down to second is Womack with one out. You can see Brocious playing in at third base. Council with the beautiful bunt. Watch Posada continue to third base. Catcher's responsibility, once a third baseman makes that play, is to cover third to keep the runner at first from advancing. So the bare hand pick up the first time, the glove pick up this time, two sacks in a row for Council. Now Gonzalez gets another opportunity, hit by a pitch his first time up. Under its second, one out here in the third inning with no score. Talk about teams being strong up the middle with a catcher, the shortstop, the second base with the center fielder. The Yankees are strong in the corners of their infield defensively. Ball one. To a guy who's been hit twice. Andy Pettit got him on the left wrist in game two. And in the first inning tonight, Orlando Hernandez got him on the Tootsie. Here's a 1 0. 2 0. And Hernandez is blaring in at the home plate umpire. Feeling he's being squeezed here in this third inning. with Durazo on deck. I don't think Hernandez uh, has a complaint. Those balls have not been close. The four to Walmart. And now the three to Gonzalez. Perhaps he's just upset at himself. A 3-0 pitch. That's not close either. Second walk of the inning. And Posada is going to go out and try and calm him down. Hernandez is upset. Now Stottlemyre recognizing that from the bench. He's going to go out and slow down his right hander. Third walk, second of the inning, two on for DeRazzo. So while Mel Stottlemyre goes out to talk, we'll talk about what happens tonight immediately after the game. It's a special edition of the Best Damn Sports Show period on Fox Sports Net. White Sox pitcher and former Yankee ace David Wells will join Tom Arnold, John Kruk, and the rest of the gang 
for what promises to be a unique and candid review of tonight's Game 4 action. For comedy commentary and updated scores and highlights, it's the best damn sports show, period. Tonight after the game, only on Fox Sports Net. So Hernandez has got everybody talking to him, trying to calm him down, and with two on, one out, he calms one down into the strike zone for DeRazzo. He can put Arizona on the board here in the third inning. Two four pitch bookend to walks to the leadoff batter, Womack. And then after the sacrifice to Gonzalez. So here's DeRazzo who walked his first time up. Again with runners in scoring position this year, opponents at 171. Against Fernandez. Two on with one out for Durazo. And a fly ball into shallow right. Two out. Womack tags will go to third. Broke cut off and it's first and third. Two out. What an odd inning it's been for Hernandez. He walks two batters on four pitches and then makes a perfect pitch on Durazo. O'Neal out there shaking his head as Womack just took third on him and really if it was O'Neal if it was anybody out in right field Womack has got the speed to make it second to third and now with runners in the corners two out it's up to Matt Williams again who missed a chance back in the first inning when he had the bases loaded one out he struck out. Inside. And now Hernandez is in the face of the home plate umpire. This has been brewing all in. And then Racuano is going to go all the way out to the mound and get in the face of Hernandez. A manager cannot argue balls and strikes. It's an automatic ejection. I think Joe Torrey just out to talk to Racuano, trying to calm Racuano down. Under those circumstances, obviously no objection. We right. talked to Jim Torrey about this before the game with regard to his hitters not complaining last night. Yeah. After complaining, pitch after pitch in game two. And he said, we told them not to complain about balls and strikes. Because when you complain about something like that, you're making an excuse not to succeed. And here's Hernandez's reaction after not getting that pitch. And that's what drew the home plate umpire and Rapuano out from behind home plate. Runners at first and third, two out. And now the 1 0. One ball, one strike. Let's see if he had a complaint. Posada setting up inside. That ball could have been a strike. One one count now on Matt Williams. Runners at the corners, two out. Two balls and a strike. That reaction, not too much unlike Roger Clemens while back with Boston. In the game out in Oakland. 1990 Terry Cooney behind the plate. Clemens was ejected game four against the Athletics. Athletics went, went on to win and lost in the series to Cincinnati. Williams hits it hard but right at Brokers. The second the inning is over. Rapuano walked down the first baseline a bit. Hernandez never looked at him. Bottom of the third inning, no score. Shane Spencer will lead off for New York. He's the number seven hitter. Schilling has been perfect through the first two with two strikeouts. Brocious and Soriano will follow. Nothing, nothing. And a ball outside. Now Schilling kind of pauses and that draws a reaction to the crowd here at Yankee Stadium after not getting that pitch. 
from the home plate umpire Ed Rapuano. This crowd knows Ed's here. They were on him during the break. This is a fastball because Schilling said, yes, I like the pitch. No, I don't like the location. It's probably be a fastball away to Spencer. It's a bad habit for pitchers to get into. was looking for a fastball away. There it is right there. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. Now he steps off. So he liked the pitch, then he didn't like the location. When he came back with a fastball away, Spencer was ready for it. All and two on brushes. season. He's played his way into the lineup here in game four while Knobloch has played his way out of it. And Spencer who delivered a diving catch in the sixth inning last night cranks up a home run here in the third inning to put the Yankees on top. Rocious strikes out. Third strikeout for Schiller. Once again, Kurt Schilling gave up 37 home runs to tie the National League lead, but 31 of those 37 were solo shots. The third home run given up by Kurt in postseason. Here it is one more time. Yes, I want that pitch. Nope. Uh-uh, not there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Then he stepped off. And then when he came back on, Spencer had to be looking for a fastball. And he got it. Soriano with one out, nobody on, and a run home. Pops it up. Right side, long run for Council as the best angle. Now gives way to Sanders, who had time to get there. Two out. Fastball away. Home run away, and the Yankees take the lead. What has been a characteristic of this run for the Yankees has been Joe Torre's amazing ability to play hunches. Not block watching, taken out of the lineup tonight. Spencer in the lineup last night, in left field, makes the diving catch tonight, gets the start, and ends up putting the Yankees up in the third inning with a home run. Now Cheater, they continue to pitch him inside, strike one. Bob Brenly has had one hunch after another go right early in this postseason. One hop for Womack, inning over. We'll see how Bob Brenly's hunch to start Kurt Schilling works out here tonight. Fastball up and away, and up and away. One to nothing Yankees after three in game four. Kurt Schilling talking to Ed Repuano saying my fault after he complained about that first pitch to Shane Spencer. First pitch to Steve Finley is a breaking ball for a strike. Umpire's common response after.
after an argument about a pitch, something happens later in the at bat. Well, I didn't give up the home run. Yeah, right. And that's Schilling saying, yeah, that was me giving up the home run. Yep. Trying to take some of the heat off Ed Rapuano as Steve Finley gets on. Right here, and for the third time in the four innings now, for the Diamondbacks, they've put their leadoff man on. Finley is on with his second hit of this series. He's two out of eight. And now Reggie Sanders will bat a strikeout victim his first time up. Steve Finley singled on a pitch which he had swung through the time before with the bases loaded twice. Kurt Schilling made that start in game one. He gave up a first inning run on a flare double by Bernie Williams down the left field line that scored Jeter. It was one to nothing Yankees after a half inning as Sanders grounds one to short. Jeter's short and he's the double pick. Schilling said after Council tied it in the bottom of the first on a home run. He knew that the work had been done to overcome that first inning mistake. He was either going to win or they were going to be lifting him for a pinch hitter in the eighth or ninth inning in a tie game. Nicely turned by Soriano. When a hitter is jammed, he doesn't get out of the box as well. And that's why Reggie Sanders, a fast runner, grounds into a double play instead of a fielder's choice. That race is spun off the plate with ball one. One of the first things I'm sure a second baseman tries to learn and Soriano picked up the second base position toward the tail end of spring training this year for the Yankees. He's out of cheat. Right there. And he cheated there on the double play. The neighborhood play. And when we say cheat, kids, we mean it in the best sense right. of the words, right? Mm. Two balls and a strike on Gray. Well, the reason that umpires, particularly second basemen, will give them the benefit of the doubt touching second base is if they stay on the bag, the chance of an injury is great. Now three and one on Grace with two out, nobody on, and Damian Miller, the number nine hitter on deck. Grace gets into one to right. This game is tied as Mark Grace hits it into the upper deck here at Yankee Stadium. A 1-1 game in the fourth inning. Fans throw it back, the number eight hitter. Mark Grace would love to have that souvenir. He has been wide-eyed walking around Yankee Stadium. Now he visits the upper deck, which wasn't there in fair territory when Babe Ruth used to swing the bat in this ballpark. That has been Hernandez Bugaboo, the home run to left-handers. Damian Miller pops it up. Soriano puts it away, and this game is tied. Home run by Spencer in the bottom of the third. A home run by Mark Grace in the top of the fourth. Cubby for life, not this year. First year with the Diamondbacks, and he has tied game four. Prior to that 3-1 pitch to Mark Grace, I know it crossed your mind, it crossed mine, that here at Yankee Stadium, two out, nobody on. Grace, who doesn't hit a lot of home runs, it had to enter his mind in a one-run game, and he just crushed one into the upper deck to tie this game, and now we're in the bottom of the fourth. That's when a, a non-home-run hitter can hit a home run. That's situational hitting. Ahead in the count, he knows what he's going to get, takes one shot at it, and it works. No balls, two strikes. Yesterday, Mark Grace was walking around Yankee Stadium with Kevin Kennedy, talking about the history of Yankee Stadium, stadium that the Yankees first started playing in in 1923. They had a little mini tour of this ballpark as O'Neill strikes out on a fork ball, one away. Here is their conversation from yesterday. This is where you can really take it in like, wow, the house that Ruth, Ruth built. And then I'm going to hit in that batter's box where Babe Ruth hit Mickey Mantle half the time and Reggie Jackson, the same left-handed batter's box. They got a little more power than me, but, <laughs> but, I, but I'm still going to, I can share that batter's box with them. It's only 314, though. 314? Even at 37 years old, I think I got 314, <laughs> maybe in batting practice. 
He had plenty more than 314 on that 3 1 pitch as Bernie Williams takes a ball outside with one out, nobody on in the bottom of the fourth of a tie game. He had closer to 390 inning. Race up with the Cubs in 88. Played through the 2000 season. In that Cub uniform. And now wearing the Diamondback pinstripes. Bernie Williams hits it foul. One of the reasons why the Diamondbacks wear pinstripes, really the reason, is that when they brought Buck Showalter aboard before the team was put together for the franchise started play he put everything together whether it was the design of the stadium whether it was the uniforms the different combinations of the uniforms he had just been let go by the New York Yankees and wanted to incorporate pinstripes in the Diamondback uniform Joe Walter who was 19 years in the Yankee organization brought the pinstripes with him out to the desert it should be given credit uh, for the organization of the teams before 1996 before Bob Brindley took the next step this year. Having the guy on the mound in his first full year in an Arizona Diamondback uniform certainly helped. Bob Brindley shaking his head at that last call by Ed Rapuano. Williams didn't run out of the batter's box again. How many times is Bernie Williams not going to run out of the batter's box? As he's standing near home plate, he's the second out of the inning. Looks bad right here. There was a time during the divisional series when the ball hit the cutout and came back. That was understandable. This one wasn't. Run until you're called out. And it's unusual for Bernie Williams to do that because normally he runs everything hard, not then. So two out, nobody on, and Tino Martinez, who grounded out to second his first time up, takes a strike. Martinez still looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 8. Diamondbacks have three hits. The Yankees have one. Each side has one run. And very different strike zone. These two teams are working with tonight as opposed to that of Dale Scott last night. It was rather liberal east to west. Rapuano has been tight on the corners. Here's a 1-1. One ball, two strikes on Tino Martinez. Two different pitchers, Schilling and... Hernandez Hernandez with fastballs and breaking balls you rarely see Schilling use the breaking ball they try to backdoor the left handers occasionally For the most part high fastballs and low splitters Martinez got a piece of that split fingered pitch and it's still one and two when the splitter is working normally hitters hit it right into the ground Get over it. It's a very tough pitch to lift. Roger Craig, the former Giant manager, a big influence on both Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson and their developments of the split finger fastball. 96 miles per hour from Schilling in the count evens at 2 2. Tina Martinez hit 34 home runs during the regular season. Probably the most consistent hitter the Yankees had during the regular season. He is now 0 for 9 in the World Series. Schilling, five strikeouts. When a member of the opposition hits a home run into the upper deck, down either line, and you have great seats, fortunate to sit in the lower sections, pay attention. to this from your local Fox station tied at one through four.
Top of the order for the Diamondbacks. Fifth inning, 1-1 is the score, and a breaking ball stays high to Tony Womack. He's a leadoff hitter in this lineup and has now let off three of the first five innings and reached base in his first two. Once on a hit, once on a walk, and he's up on the count here, 2-0. Six straight balls to Womack after the base hit up the middle. His first time up. Hernandez has walked three, struck out three, allowed a run on three hits. Two and one. Talking a while ago about Schilling's remark after giving up that first inning run in game one and then getting the run back when Council hit the bottom of the first inning home run to tie it. He said, I knew I was going to leave with a win. Or leave in a tie game late. He's 1 1 here in the fifth inning, matched up against Hernandez, and Womack hits one down into the right field corner. Thinking about two. O'Neill makes the play off the wall. The throw is back in, safe with a double. Tony Womack back in the leadoff spot on base for the third time tonight. Fine play by Paul O'Neill. And a nice pickup by Derek Jeter. Breaking ball hit down the right field line. Watch O'Neill play it terrifically off the wall. And now the short hop by Jeter. The Womack is safe. Womack with great speed, 28 stolen bases. You think it would be an easy double, but a fine play by O'Neill made it close. After having what he called an American League-like lineup last night, Rob Brenly putting Womack ninth, changed that around for game four, and Womack back in the leadoff spot. A single, walked, now doubled, now it's counsel. Another bunt. To the right side this time. Martinez falls down and still gets the out. Sacrifice is good, 3-4. As Tino Martinez showed a lot of athletic ability falling down making that play. Three straight sacrifices for Council, but watch Tino Martinez look at third. He looks, he had an idea, and now when he turns around, he has to throw from his knees. Really the left side of his seat. The look to third. Plopping on the ground and throws from his rear end to get Council. Now the Yankees forced to bring their infield in. Most sacrifice bunts in a single postseason. Council is up to six. Record holder in that category is Gonzalez. Yeah. Went around, couldn't hold up, strike one. In World Series play, Council has now tied the all-time record. Held by Joe Tinker with three sacrifices in a World Series game. Wes Westrom as well. Tinker with the Cubs. 1906. Westrom with New York in 1954. Infield is in. Runner at third with one out. On the inside corner, one and two. Getting that call this time from Ed Rapuano. Ball back in third, one out, one two pitch, two balls, two strikes. Pitch was up. Gonzalez went after it, still two and two. A pitch to hit for Gonzalez, and he fouls it back. But that gives you an idea of how the Yankees, like the Cardinals and the Braves, in series before, have tried to pitch Gonzalez inside. Hernandez has struck out three. Now 
wants a full count on Gonzalez. With a Rubio Durazo waiting to hit next. Situations like this, I think El Duque will try to get Gonzalez to go after a ball, not a strike. Shallow left. Spencer. Will they test him? Womack is coming. Here's the throw. Out to end the inning. The catch last night. The home run tonight. And now the throw. Posada with a short out pickup. The ball was in his bare hand. I don't think he ever touched him, but out was the call. We'll be back, take another look, still tied 1-1. Bottom of the fifth inning, a combination that just ended the top of the fifth inning. Womack and Posada. Womack called out at the plate on the tag made by Posada. Tim, there's no doubt that the ball was not in the glove of Jorge Posada when the glove was on the body of Womack. The question is, if the bare hand, the right hand with the ball in it, grazed Womack on his way to the plate. The count goes to 2-0 from Schilling on Jorge Posada, who fly to left his first time up. It was a breathtaking play by Posada. Shane Spencer was shallow in left field, an in-between hop as opposed to a short hop. How he held on to the ball, I will never know. But at first glance, you're right, Joe, it looked like Posada tagged the Womack with the glove, with the ball in his right hand. We're going to take several views of it. What a play by Posada. It was 2-0, oh, now it's 2-2 two two on Posada, who homered in last night's game, has two home runs in the postseason with only three RBI, hitting 341 at the start of the night. Right in the middle of this Yankee lineup, but only three RBIs to show you how poor the top of the order has been for the Yankees. A 2 2. One out as Schilling just pounded it by him. This is our first one, and you'll see what Joe and I were saying. Great play by Posada. And it looks like he tags him with the glove with the ball in the right hand. However, here. He tags him with the glove and the ball. The left armpit before Womack reaches home and a great shot and a terrific play by Jorge Posada. You just can't say enough about that play. Man. One out here, nobody on, and an 0-1 pitch coming to David Justice. 0-2. To make that play about a yard off the line and then to hold on to the ball to come back and have the wherewithal to not only tag with the glove but perhaps realize he didn't have the ball in the glove and he had to tag with the bare hand. Some play. Justice strikes out. And David Justice now 0 for 7. Really struggling at the plate. Another look, the ball is out of the glove. The bare hand, the ball in it catches Womack just under the left arm just before he got to the plate. And here's Shane Spencer who gets a nice hand. That Spencer's was, had a big night. Excuse me, Joe. That was a very, very difficult call for Ed Rapuano also, but he made the right one. So with two out, nobody on, Spencer, who homered in his only at bat so far tonight, pitch away, gets one inside for ball one. Last night, with two on and two out in the sixth inning, that diving catch to keep it tied 1-1. Tonight, the top of this fifth, that catch and throw to keep it tied 1-1. And the one on the Yankee side is compliments of Shane Spencer's third inning leadoff home run. Count in Spencer's favor here, 2 0. Good. 
pitch from Schilling. Two and one. Right over the top of that fork ball on two and oh. Heidi Spencer watching from the seats here at Yankee Stadium. Was two and oh, now it's two and two. Schilling trying to get through the fifth inning here tonight. He has allowed one hit. Three days rest, the short rest has not affected him at all. Only one base runner, and you're looking at it. He went on for long. Williams backs up and still makes the play to end the inning. Seven strikeouts for Schilling. Only one hit. The home run by Spencer. Sixth inning now. Game four, tied 1 1. Here's a Rubio Durazo leading off the sixth inning of a 1 1 game outside for ball one. Durazo, Williams, and Finley. If anybody gets on Reggie Sanders, who's down in the number seven spot for the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks have had chances tonight. The top four in the Arizona lineup loaded with left handed bats. Womack, Council, Gonzalez, Durazo. Been on base six times. Throw in the three perfect sacrifice bunts by Craig Council. Realize that the Diamondbacks have scored zero runs in those situations. Their only run, a two out home run by Grace back in the fourth. Two balls and a strike on Durazo. Matt Williams, a hitter on deck, has left five runners on tonight. Durazo is walked and fly to right. Two balls, two strikes. Talk about great defense when you need it. Last night, seventh inning, and stopped by Soriano on the ball hit by Durazo. And you've seen Shane Spencer's catch. Tonight, the throw by Spencer. And the brilliant tag by Posada. Posada made that play happen. Durazo gets a piece. It's still two and two. Tony Womack has started three innings by reaching base. He has been bunted to the next base all three times, and the Diamondbacks have not been able to bring him home. Here's another 2 2 pitch to Durazo. One out, strikeout number four. Tonight's box score for Arizona brought to you by John Hancock. Womack, two for two plus a walk. Council, three sacrifice bunts. Then there's Gonzalez hitless, Durazo hitless, Williams hitless. Finley has a hit. The only run. Provided by Mark Grace with a home run in the fourth inning. Here's Matt Williams. And there's ball one. Bob Brindley telling us that Kurt Schilling gets stronger in the late innings. I'll tell you, Orlando Hernandez just threw his best fastball of the night. The Durazo. A fastball right on the corner away. Had some extra pop on it. Breaking ball misses. It's 2-0. 82 pitches on the night for Hernandez compared to 56 for Kurt Schilling through five innings. Schilling looks at none of his teammates. Communicates with none of his teammates. The games that he pitches. So he's sitting next to Michael Brenly. Bob Brenly's Son. Here's a 3 0. Williams swinging on 3 0 and pops it up. Posada. Two up. That's a pretty easy call to allow Williams to swing 3 0. He just gets up under it. Posada with an easy play. Frustrating night for Matt Williams as it comes down into the glove of Posada. Williams struck out with the bases loaded, one out back in the first inning, and bounced into a force out with two on and two out in the 
third. Here's Steve Finley with the bases empty and two away. Right one. Can you believe the pitching we have seen in this World Series? Remarkable. From pitch one thrown by Kurt Schilling on Saturday night in Phoenix. Mike Messina did not have his best stuff in game one. No. To a man. That is a foul ball. To a man, the Yankees cannot wait to get Mike Messina back on the mound tomorrow night for game five. That's right. Oh, and two on Finley with two out and nobody on. Got the corner and over. Five strikeouts for Hernandez. Bottom of the sixth inning. More work for Kurt Schilling. Brocious, Soriano, Jeter coming up. Tied 1-1. Tim, there's a dilemma when you face Kurt Schilling aside from his wonderful pitching stuff. And that is the approach you're going to take, especially against Schilling working on short rest. And that is, do you go after the first pitch? The numbers are amazing. When the first pitch from Schilling is put into play, opponents are hitting 429 against him, the second highest average in the major leagues during the regular season. Brocious hits one to center. Finley stumbled going after it. Off the base of the wall. And Brocious has a lead off double. One stumble by Finley and two bases by Brocious. First couple steps from Finley, he almost went down. He ended up regaining his balance. He got close to that ball off the bat of Brocious, but you could see the frustration on his face when he didn't come up with it. There is the slip right there, the recovery not in time. And Brocious on in second base. And now look for Soriano to bunt. Grace way in at first. Williams about a half step in front of the bag at third. And a strike on the outside corner to Soriano. Mark Grace was so close then. He could have shaken hands with Soriano after Alfonso took the pitch. You're going to bunt it. You try to bunt it down the third baseline and make the third baseman feel the ball. swing as they abandon the bunt and the counts 0 and 2 the Yankees are 1 for 10 with runners in scoring position this World Series a lead off double by Brocious and Soriano is in the hole 0 and 2 out of the bunt he fouls it he strikes out that's a terrible play awful Joe Torre can't believe it. You can see that look in Torre's eyes. Then wait a minute. Bunning 0-2. Terrible play by Soriano. He takes the first pitch, swings through the second one, and then 0-2. Joe Torre can't believe it, neither can I. Bad, bad play right there. So now Jeter with a runner at second, one out, and Torrey immediately talks to Soriano. World Series or not, instruction from the Yankee manager, the 23-year-old second baseman. 
Shu way late with that swing on a 96 mile an hour pitch from Schilling strike one. Makes you scratch your head. Uh, Alfonso's at bat. Perhaps he thought the first pitch was called a ball and maybe the, the count was one and one. That would be the only explanation. Now Bernie Williams talking to the young Soriano. Schilling trying to pitch around a leadoff double. Brocious at second with one out. Jeter is jammed again. And the count on two. Just to finish the point as you look at the pitch again about Schilling. When the first pitch is put into play against him this season, opponents are hitting 429 against him. But if he gets ahead with a first pitch strike, you're done. Opponents hit 174 against him. That's the unfortunate choice hitters have. So if you want to get his pitch count up and he's throwing strikes, then you're in trouble. The 0 2 to Jeter. To the right side for Grace. To the bag, two out. And now with a runner at third, two out. Paul O'Neill was winding down a long major league career who came here in 1993 and has been at the center of the revival of the Yankees. Bats trying to put New York on top. Meet on the mound, and we go back in time to 1990, the National League Championship Series, playing with Cincinnati. A younger Paul O'Neill, part of a Reds team that swept the Oakland A's in the World Series that year. After getting past the Pirates in the NLCS, and now with a runner at third, two out, it's O'Neill who is likely to retire at the end of the year, looking for a two-out hit. One. And O'Neill is yelling away from the home plate umpire Ed Rapuano. Rapuano is yelling back at O'Neill as O'Neill took a walk around the plate. Paul didn't like it, and I don't blame him, but that pitch was a strike. And Rapuano standing there with his hands on his hips. Been a long night for the home plate umpire. The 0 1. Miller kept it at the plate. Didn't know he had it. Didn't know he had blocked enough of it. The count 1 and 1. Damian Miller down on the splitter. Does a good enough job to keep it close. Pitchers have to have confidence in catchers' ability to block the ball in order to throw the good split finger fastball. One one in the bottom of the sixth, game four of this 2001 World Series, with the Diamondbacks up two games to one. Two balls and a strike on Paul O'Neill. Working from the windup during this at bat by Paul O'Neill. Just high, three and one. If O'Neill reaches, Bernie Williams waits to hit next.
play at first base was a lot closer than we initially thought. It really was. We'll get a look at it on the replays in a moment. 1 1 game, seventh inning. Reggie Sanders off the hands, fouled back for strike one. Watch the right foot of Kurt Schilling. Mark Grace couldn't get the ball out cleanly. Up, and then he comes down just before the left foot of Paul O'Neill hits the bag and an exuberant Schilling back to the Diamondback dugout. Man. No balls, one strike on Sanders. 0 for 2 tonight, including grounding into a double play. Now he tries to bunt his way on. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Give you a pretty good idea of how the Diamondbacks think Hernandez is throwing now in the mid to late innings. It's mm -hmm. Sanders, who's been their cleanup hitter for the first three games of this World Series, is trying to drop down a bunt. The 0 2. Cheater. Low tracer to Jeter, giving with the hop and making a strong throw. We've had a total of two runs in tonight's game. One driven in by Shane Spencer on a home run. Game tying shot off the bat of Mark Grace, his last time up. Back in the fourth inning, one out, nobody on, ball one. Hernandez fell behind Grace, three and one. Challenged him and lost the challenge. Grace lost one into the upper deck. Two balls, no strikes. Looking for another pitch to pull. And he does into the seats foul. It had been 11 days since Hernandez at last started because the Yankees finished off Seattle in five games then the layoff then Hernandez the number four starter in the rotation for Joe Torre it looks like it has taken him about 75 pitches to really start throwing effectively the team misses high with a fastball three and one struggling early the Diamondbacks loading the bases in the first inning getting a couple on in the third inning Lead off hit later a home run in the fourth inning. Hernandez issues a one out walk to Grace. The fourth walk of the evening for the New York right-hander. The in-game box score for the Yankees brought to you by John Hancock. In the bottom part of the order. A home run by Spencer. Lead off double by Brocious in the sixth inning, and that is it. Rest of the lineup hitless, no walks, eight strikeouts piled up by Kurt Schilling. Here's Damian Miller, the number nine hitter, two out of 12 in this World Series. Inside for ball one. Romero Mendoza, the right hander, Mike Stanton, the left hander. And as they start to loosen up, and they just got up, Mel Stottlemyre will trot to the mound. Last night, Roger Clemens got through seven. Got the game into the hands of Mariano Rivera. Tonight, Orlando Hernandez has thrown 97 pitches. Tries to go through seven. He has a runner at first, one out. 1-0 count on Damian Miller. Talking to Joe Torre before the game, and you asked him, Joe, will Rivera be ready for two tonight? Joe said yes. He said, I don't want to, but if I have to, he will be available for two innings. That hit Miller, and after the walk, the second hit by pitch tonight, out of the hand of Orlando Hernandez, and it's two on with one out. With Womack coming up. It hit two guys, Damian Miller and Jorge Posada. Posada taking the brunt of that hit by pitch. And now with Womack coming up, counsel to follow the left-handed part of the lineup. They asked Tino Martinez to go over and talk to Hernandez. And you could... 
see a pitching change here, although Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre seated with Stanton and Mendoza getting ready. Well, Womack, now you see Joe with his right hand telling Posada go out and talk. He'll go out for a while, then home plate umpire, Ed Rapuano will go out there to break it up, and Torrey will go out to, to take Hernandez out of the game. But you can see with that, you mentioned Senior Winches the other day. I think yes. that was Joe Torrey doing Senior Winches, right? <laughs> That's it. Saw it right. <laughs> so Rapuano doesn't have to go out there. Hernandez knew it. Any big league pitcher knows it in that spot when Martinez came over and the catcher comes out. You talk about how that used to be an awkward conversation. Oh man. Trying to get a pitcher's confidence and a, a manager sends you out there to talk to him, knowing he's coming out of the game. And Joe telling El Duque he did a fine job, but he did. And now Hernandez comes over to talk to Ed Rapuano. The two had words earlier, and they're able to smile, laugh about it. And the mood is lightened between those two as Hernandez heads out. Next hill call to the bullpen. Time for a left-hander. Time for Mike Stanton. Two on. One out. Top of the order coming up for Arizona. Hernandez got into the seventh inning. Mike Stanton will try to get out of the seventh inning. Joe Torre, a catcher, when he broke in, Used to give signs to Warren Spahn. Now as the manager of the Yankees giving different signs to catchers. And by the way, as you look at Stanton, and we give you his numbers, credit Ed Rapuano with walking over and getting in the path of Orlando Hernandez as Hernandez made his way over to the dugout. Put that nasty incident a little earlier to bed. Now with two on, one out, a 1-1 game in the top of the seventh. It's Stanton against Womack, who's had a big night. That's a big fastball from Stanton, strike one. Rapuano came up the line and made sure that he and Hernandez were on good terms as Hernandez left, stayed right. Now with two on, one out, Tony Womack, who has single, walked, and doubled, tries to put Arizona out in front. One ball, one strike. I think Mike Stanton does Tony Womack a favor by throwing him a breaking ball. Those two fastballs, as well as Mike Stanton, can throw the ball. I mean, that was gas, both of them. Stanton has not had a lot of work in the postseason for the Yankees. It's just been the way it has fallen for New York. As Womack is late on another 92 mile an hour fastball in the count one and two. The left fielder and center fielder, Shane Spencer and Bernie Williams, playing Womack shallow and over toward the left. Womack does not have a lot of power. Only three home runs on the year and almost no power to left field. For the Diamondbacks, no speed on the bases. Grace, the bad hamstring, the lead runner at second, the catcher Damian Miller at first. One out here in the seventh. Breaking ball misses to Womack two and two. Just so you know, Stanton has worked only seven and two-thirds innings this postseason. With small fingers, he uses that splitter rarely. Womack spoiled it. But he always, when he gets the ball, the bare hand is out of the glove. He tries to stretch the middle finger and the index finger. So when he does throw the splitter or the splitter, he throws it effectively. The Freudian slip there. The splitter. Well, you saw him. You know, wetting his pitching hand, so. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two on, one out. Ooh. Gonna be tough to turn to. Jeter in the middle, here the ball.
Pitching, pitching, pitching. Stanton in relief of El Duque. Tonight's game is being seen live around the world by U.S. servicemen and women. Thanks to the American Forces Radio and Television Service, all of America salutes you and appreciates what you do for our country. These are special moments when Ronan Tynan is in the house. He is here tonight. We go to public address announcer Bob Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise? And please direct your attention to the microphone behind home plate. And welcome the world famous Irish tenor Ronan Tynan, who now sings God Bless America. site for the September 11 fund benefiting survivors, victims, families, and rescue personnel. The September 11 fund is a collaboration of United Ways, the New York Community Trust, and the Council of Foundations. As pitch one of the bottom of the seventh inning is in for a strike, nothing new from Kurt Schilling. With Bernie Williams, Tino Martinez, and Posada coming up. He just said fastball, it's mouthed it. Williams fouls a 94 mile an hour pitch back. It was with Williams at the plate back in game one right. that we saw Schilling mouthing the pitches to his catcher Miller, and he says he does it all the time. Yeah, right. Here it is right here. Fastball. Bernie's from Puerto Rico, but he speaks very good English. Here's the 0-2. They say. Apparently. Apparently. That was a hanging splitter right there. And Bob Brimley telling us that one indication, and perhaps the only indication, that Schilling is tiring is when his splitter is up in the strike zone. Still, it's only been a 72 pitch night for Kurt Schilling.
Valentino Martinez stands in. Martinez 0 for 2. He's grounded out. He has struck out. Typical from Schilling tonight. Pitch one is a strike. 94 miles per hour. And with the cleanup hitter at the plate, no sign of the bunt. And Joe Torrey does not like to bunt with his left-handed hitters in the lineup. Again, the short porch in right field. One ball, one strike. Regardless of what happens the rest of the way, in my mind at least, it is obvious Bob Brenly made the right call by putting Schilling on the mound. No question about it. So effective tonight. And if there is a game seven back in Phoenix, he would be available for that. Here's a 1 1 to Tino Martinez. Two balls and a strike. The Yankees have one run on three hits. They've left one runner all night. For the second inning of row, they had their leadoff man on. A leadoff double by Brocious last inning. He was stranded. Leadoff single by Bernie Williams here in the seventh. Three balls and a strike. He almost went around, but held up. of the night from Kurt Schilling and Bob Welch the pitching coach goes to the phone the Diamondbacks have yet to use their closer in this series Young Hung Kim they can't get to him or there hasn't been a situation where he has been needed they're gathering on the mound right now to talk about what to do just in case Posada bunts, but again, Torrey does not like to bunt with his left-handed hitters. There's Kim getting loose right now. Miguel Batista, another good arm, is supposed to start tomorrow night. He's not even sitting in the bullpen. Game only in the seventh inning. Two on with nobody out and Schilling. Is in his first jam of the night. Strike one. 95 miles per hour from Kurt Schilling. The first pitch to Williams, Martinez, and Posada in this inning have all been strikes. Laurel Posada. Little Jorge watching Big Jorge with two on, nobody out. Good swing on that pitch. A count of one, two. We have not seen too many pitches in the middle of the strike zone tonight. That was one of them. It is rare from Schilling or from Hernandez or from Stanton. But that pitch certainly hit him. Now Schilling calls Damian Miller out to talk. Runners on at first and second, nobody out. The Diamondbacks leading this World Series two games to one. The seventh inning of a 1-1 game, and we have seen tremendous pitching from Kurt Schilling, Orlando Hernandez, and Mike Stanton, who came on to finish the top of the seventh. Last night, Bernie Williams made a great play on a splitter in the dirt. He's alive for that right now. That one stays out of the dirt and out of the strike zone, one and two. out of play. To show you the situation in the Arizona bullpen, 
They have Schilling on the mound and their closer getting loose in the seventh. The closer who has told Bob Brenly, if you need me to pitch three innings, I can. A former starter in Korea. The one two. Posada's had some of the best swings against Schilling all night. But again, an idea about how Schilling is throwing. We still can't get around on the high fastball. And here we are in the seventh inning. Williams, Martinez on for New York. Posada trying to bring him home. Double play ball. Council to Womack. On the first, punter at third, two out. Four, six, three on the double play. Osana hits it fairly hard, but right at Greg Council. An easy double play to Womack. Martinez getting down because of the throw by Womack. Easy double play, 4-6-3. And now it takes a hit for New York from David Justice, who is 0 for 7 in this World Series and has not looked good at the plate. He was struck out twice tonight. Runner at third, two out. Tie game, bottom of the seventh. Way late with a swing and a foul ball. His career against Schilling, but that was long ago. Those numbers, the reason why he was in the lineup in game one in Phoenix and O'Neill was not. Not only two strikeouts in this game for Justice, but he is 0 for 7 with seven strikeouts in this World Series. How about that? He has not put a ball in play. Runner in third with two out. On the outside corner, 0 and 2, 98 miles per hour in the seventh inning of this game, a game started by Schilling on three days rest. You talk about reaching back. Wow. So Justice is set up for his third strikeout of the night and his eighth of this World Series. Wouldn't go after the splitter, one and two. The Diamondbacks in the eighth inning will have Council, Gonzalez, Durazo, three lefties for Mike Stanton. What will the score be? 1 1. The runner at third, two out in the bottom of the seventh. Again, Miller good enough to keep it at the plate. What a save by Damian Miller. After that miserable night last night, for the time being, keeps it tied. And he is summoned again by Kurt Schilling. Runner in scoring position here. Runner in third, two out for New York. The Yankees are one out of 14 in this series in this position. You can see David Justice still talking to Ed Rapuano about that fastball on the corner, the 0-1 pitch that made it 0-2. It's two balls, two strikes on Justice. Went up and after it, and Schilling struck him out. Justice has struck out in all eight events in this World Series, and Schilling is through seven. Three days rest, four days rest, doesn't matter. Schilling, great tonight, just like he was in game one. Eighth inning, tied 1-1. A 1-1 game into the eighth inning. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver with you. There's an old saying in baseball, the good pitching will stop good hitting every time and vice versa. 
<laughs> so I ask you, I present to you, Mr. McCarver, what are we seeing here tonight? Great pitching or just very poor hitting? Well, we're seeing great pitching is what we're seeing. I knew the answer. Yeah. On the outside corner for a strike from Stanton to Craig. Council. If most major league hitters, as Mendoza is warming, had to face the pitching that the Diamondbacks and the Yankees have faced in this series, with the exception of game one and Messina's outing, a lot of hitters out of work. A lot of them. 0 oh 2 on Council. That's about as mean a look as Craig Council can give a home plate umpire. Thinking he had checked his swing. Called for strike two. Council has dropped down three perfect bunts so far tonight. Stan goes even farther away. It's one and two. Sometimes on a check swing, there have been hitters that have broken bones in their hands. Uh, the torque is so great that when you check a swing, it takes its toll on the arms, the wrist, the elbow, or the hands. And it looked like on that first check swing, Council rubbing the bicep of his right arm, perhaps straining something. One ball, two strikes. Off the end of the bat. This is what we were talking about. The count 0 oh and 1. The curveball from Stanton. And the check swing. He went too far. There's a lot of torque that goes into a swing like that. Council rubbing that right arm. In the hole here. That World Series patch on his sleeve might be itchy. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Two and two. Boy, is Stanton throwing hard. 94 miles an hour. Temperature has finally dropped down in this postseason to where it's invigorating to some of these pitchers. Bob Renley talked about that with Kevin Kennedy during the pregame show with regard to Schilling getting a start here tonight. The 2 2. Breaking ball misses. Council trying to get on to start this eighth inning. That's a bad call right there. 2 2 to Craig Council. If you're going to challenge anybody, you're challenging right there. Catchers are, are trained on 2 2 pitches. When in doubt, Call for the pitch that the pitcher can get over the best. That means fastball. If he ends up walking council, you can blame it on the 2 2 pitch. It's 3 and 2. With Gonzalez and Durazo to follow. 1-1 one, one in the eighth. Into center. Williams. One out. Our game summary is brought to you by Pepsi. A lot of zeros up there. Not many hits. A total of seven. Schilling, Hernandez, very good. Schilling is already through seven with nine strikeouts and only four base runners allowed. Diamondbacks have had their leadoff hitter reach four of the eight innings. Mark Grace, Shane Spencer, solo home runs. Their first in World Series play. That's accounted for all the scoring. The notebook that Kurt Schilling keeps on the opposing hitter. He also has a laptop that he can run video on. I still can't figure out how to do that on mine. But he can call up any confrontation he's had with any hitter at any point if it's on videotape. The laptop the top is a little cumbersome while you're pitching however. One ball one strike. Notebook's a little handier. That's right. Fastball right on the corner and we have seen a ton of those tonight.
Gonzalez has been hit by a pitch, drawn a walk, fly to left at the start of a 7 2 double play. Into center field, a base hit. Williams over to cut it off, and Gonzalez is on with one out here in the eighth inning. Just about 11 o'clock straight up on the scoreboard clock here at Yankee Stadium. Game four, Arizona on top, two games to one. Bill Buck, Tim McCarver with you. Michael Weissman and Bill Webb, our producer and director down in the truck. It has been the story of pitching since the beginning. The questions were about the Arizona starter. Kurt Schilling working on three days rest. He has been fantastic. And Orlando Hernandez, Yankees didn't know what to expect out of him. Six and a third innings pitch, one run on only four hits. Now it's Stanton with a runner at first, one out, facing a Rubio Durazo. Durazo hitless tonight, it's ball one. If you're thinking of why a lefty against a lefty, just remember game five of the National League Championship Series when it was Durazo who was called upon when Mark Grace pulled a hamstring. And he homered off the left-hander, Tommy Glavin of the Braves, to give the Diamondbacks the National League pennant. Also realizing Mendoza's ready in the Yankee bullpen if they went to a right-handed bat like Colbert. Check on Gonzalez, especially with Matt Williams, the right-handed hitting third baseman on deck. Joe Torrey would make that switch. So Bob Brenly wants Durazo against Stanton. He really likes the way Durazo can swing in the bat. Some good-looking. Young hitter. Here's a 1 0. Breaking ball for a strike. 1 and 1. Back to the NLCS against Tom Glavin. Batting for the injured Mark Grace. And a home run. Put the diamond backs up. Mark Grace had left with a strained right hamstring. Last night, Durazo hit five home runs coming off the bench this year for the Diamondbacks. Twelve home runs overall, and he gets into one to center. Williams back on the run, can't get it. Up against the wall. Gonzalez around third. Gonzalez to the plate. Poor throw by Soriano. Gonzalez is safe. Durazo holds it third, and the Diamondbacks lead it two to one. So the eighth Mexican to play in a World Series in the first since Jorge Orta in 1985 connects on a low fastball. The relay. Soriano's throw to the first base side. Gonzalez is safe easily. And the Diamondbacks have the lead. Did he miss second base? That was close. Gonzalez nearly stumbling around the second base bag. Ended up scoring easily. And Stanton is finished. The next L call to the bullpen. Coming in Stanton in. is gone. Mendoza is coming in. Matt Williams is coming up. The Diamondbacks lead in this series two games to one. They lead in game four, two to one. As a Rubio Durazo stays in to face Stanton. And delivers with an RBI double. Took third on the throw home. The next tell call to the bullpen. It's Mendoza's turn with the Diamondbacks up two to one. Derek Jeter on at second base. They are going to appeal the play. Luis Gonzalez came very close to missing second base. So Mendoza goes into a stretch that steps off. Throws to second. Now the step off and the throw to Jeter. First runner. Hey. Second. <laughs> here it is right here. Gonzalez looking at Bernie Williams. He wanted to make sure he didn't catch the ball. And then he looks down, doesn't know where second base is. Trips coming around the bag, but came very, very close to missing second base. But as you saw, he touched it. Infield is in. Pinch runner Meadry Cummings at third base as Williams pops it up. 
behind the plate. Posada is out of his reach and out of play. It was Dana Demuth, the second base umpire, <laughs> who asked Derek Jeter which runner. Jeter said the first runner. He said safe. Jeter said the second runner. He said it's safe too. <laughs> So it's a runner at third. Cummings, we showed you running for Durazo. And here is Ramiro Mendoza in this postseason. In six games, has an ERA under one. Infield is in. Williams is at a rough night at the plate. He has left five runners out there. Runner at third with one away. A big run sitting over there for Arizona. And it's 0-2 on Matt Williams. Young Hung Kim is getting ready in the bullpen. As Williams lays off. Schilling is up near 90 pitches and maybe finished for the night. After getting out of that seventh inning jam. Two on, nobody out for New York. Double play ball and a strikeout. Kim has yet to pitch in this series. And usually an indication of your short reliever in there if he continues to throw. The one two to Williams to short. Sheeter one play and safe as Passata dropped it. It's three to one Arizona. And Rapuano about ready to call the runner out, but Posada couldn't hang on, and it's a two-run Arizona lead. It's a bad throw by Jeter, too. It's the first base side. However, if Posada holds on, he gets the play. Bob Brindley sending Cummings on contact, but the throw makes Posada reach first base side, but a hard slide by Cummings knocks the ball out of the glove of Jorge Posada. Good, hard, clean slide. Adri Cummings is put together. He is a big body coming down the line. Safe anyway. You're right. But you can see the home plate umpire ready to put up that right fist with the safe call when Posada dropped it. So it's 3-1 to one, Arizona leading here in the eighth inning. Finley with a big swing. Foul ball to the right side, and it's out of play. One ball, one strike. With Williams, a runner at first, on in the fielder's choice for an RBI. Give Bob Brindley credit. An RBI for Williams. Derek Jeter thinks he made the play. The throw to the first base side, and Brindley forcing a Yankee mistake. Most managers would not send the runner from third with a left-handed hitter up facing a right-handed pitcher. They make the ball go through. A 1-1. One, one. Too far inside. Two balls and a strike on Finley. A one-out hit by Gonzalez. Against Stanton. Durazo, lefty on lefty. Doubled into straightaway center to score Gonzalez. Now Finley pops it up. After Williams drove home the run. Jeter out to get it. Two out. The thing almost popped out of his glove. Runner back to first. Williams two out. The batter will be Reggie Sanders. The Diamondbacks leading three to one. In the bottom of the eighth for New York, it'll be Spencer, Brocious, and Soriano. Here's Reggie Sanders. If Derek Jeter's throw is to the third base side, it allows Posada to give with the slide. Because it was to the first base side, Posada came back and made the tag. And it was right for Cummings to knock the ball out of his mitt. You can see on that virtual manager question as we looked at the play, again, at the plate, Cummings got his foot on the plate. As Posada had to drift to his right, come back, try and make the tag. Home plate umpire ready to call him out, but the ball popped out. You can see on that virtual manager question that people at home logging on believe that Schilling is going back out there for the bottom of this eighth inning. 
Young Hun Kim continues to get loose for the Diamondbacks out in their bullpen. Got to think Kim's got to be in there since he's continuing to throw. Sanders hits it to Brocious. Fielded a tricky hop in the force out at second base to end the inning. A big inning for Arizona. Up two games to one in this 2001 World Series. Durazo drove home the first. Williams the next. And as we go to the bottom of the eighth at Yankee Stadium, it's three to one Arizona. Young Hun Kim makes his first World Series appearance, and Kurt Schilling is sitting on the bench and watching here in the eighth inning. Three to one Arizona. The numbers for Kim in the postseason: only four games, an ERA of zero. Kim is asking home plate umpire if he could blow on his hands. Shane Spencer first up. Bob Friendly has made a lot of decisions in this postseason. One of them, in our opinion, worked out extremely well. Kurt Schilling starting on three days rest here in game four. This is a decision that I do not agree with. Well, if you're the Yankees, it's an interesting decision by Bob. If you're the Yankees, you're glad to see Schilling out of the game. However, if you're Bob Brindley, you're thinking about game seven. And I know your point. Forget Why, game but, seven. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm not. Here's the 2-0. <laughs> two, oh. two and one. If you're leading three to one in game four, and you've got Schilling rolling, he's right. thrown 88 pitches. He threw 98 miles an hour to David Justice last yeah. inning. Yep. Get the game here in game four. You've got Randy Johnson waiting for game six. There may be no game seven. Well, again, a lot of times the way you gauge whether to take a pitcher out or not is to consider how your opponent feels about the move in that pitcher. Three balls and a strike on Shane Spencer. Popped up to the right side. It's foul and back and out of play. I think Bob had gone as far as he could with three days rest. I think that's Bob's thinking right now. Whether it's right or wrong, we'll see. 88 pitches tonight after 102, which they considered like a day off in game one. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Spencer. They got it. One away. Bob Brenly had this conversation with Kurt Schilling. Just moments ago. That's enough. That's enough. No, no, no. Uh, listen, you're at 88 right now. We got BK locked and loaded for the last six outs. Man. Let's, let's, you know, you're here already. Schilling wanting to go back out there, which is not a surprise. I mean, right, right. That's not compelling evidence to run him back out there for the eighth inning. He's always going to want to go back out to the mound as Brocious takes ball one up and in. Joe, I'll tell you what was a surprise, a 3-2 breaking ball to Shane Spencer with a two-run lead. One-run lead, tie game, you can understand it. Shot, Spencer. On the outside corner, one ball, one strike. A 1-1. One, one. Strike two on Brocious. One of the bigger reasons that Bob Brenly would go to Kim during the off time after the NLCS, Bob Brenly actually went down into the bullpen with a bat in his hands and tried to get a look at these deliveries from Young Hun Kim. And he said, the first 25 feet or so, you cannot pick the ball up at all coming out of Kim's right hand with his submarine style approach. I think, I think what went into Brindley's thinking also was that Kim is such a different pitcher than Kurt Schilling. Schilling over the top, Kim down below. Brocious did not go two and two. And the point about Brindley looking at Kim, he said, I've never tried to stand in there against him. I don't know how anybody hits him. First Korean-born player to appear in the World Series. Congratulations to Young Hun Kim. We're in the eighth inning of a three to one game. Mm -hmm. 
counts full on Brocious as it was on Spencer. Here's that sidearm underhand delivery of Kim's. He threw a 3 2 slider to Spencer. We'll see what Brocious gets. Two out. Back to back strikeouts of Spencer and Brocious with Soriano coming up. You can see that tightly spinning fastball action. Nobody happier than Kurt Schilling. And nobody could do any better than Byung Hun Kim here to start the eighth inning with back to back strikeouts. Okay. Bob Brenly telling us before the game he couldn't wait to get Kim into a game to give these Yankees that new look. The Yankees really haven't faced any pitcher of this style. No. Uh -uh. Really, not just this year, but anytime recently. The 0 1 to Soriano. One ball, one strike. It's that sweeping breaking ball. When you throw a breaking ball from that far down under, the ball can't go down. What goes down is a sinker. But when you're under the ball, the, the ball stays on a level plane or goes up. That pitch seemed to go up. Two balls and a strike. They actually call the pitch an upshoot, yep. which is a throwback term. Or these deliveries from Kim that seem to rise when they get to the plate. Young Hun Kim is one strike away from striking out the side here in the eighth inning. Picking up for Schilling, who oh, wanted sorry. to go back out there. And Kim, who has yet to appear for tonight in the World Series, isn't phased at all by this as he has run the count full to all three hitters he has faced here in the eighth inning. That was the other unknown. You didn't know how Kim would respond. That's right. Coming out of the bullpen with that long of a layoff at Yankee Stadium for the first time in the World Series. And boy, did he respond. Struck out the side. Bob Friendly, the right decision. Kurt Schilling watching all three strikeouts from the dugout. One, two, three. Three to one after eight. Romero Mendoza back to the hill, ninth inning, and the first pitch down and away for ball one. Mark Grace homered back in the fourth inning to tie the game at one. The Diamondbacks now lead three to one. And again, you look up on the board, and there are a total of three hits up there for the Yankees. For the third time in this series, the Yankees have three hits. Game one, game two, and tonight. And a total of four runs as they have played four games now. This being the fourth game. That's outside three and one on Grace. And Joe Torre tonight trying a different combination with Jeter leading off. O'Neill in the number two spot. Everybody moving up. Spencer in there. That's paid off. With a home run for the only Yankee run of the night. Back in the third inning. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Reaching out, grounding to Jeter. Grace is out on the tag. Mark Grace back in the fourth inning. Found the upper deck. 3-1 pitch from Hernandez. And the first base coach, Eddie Rodriguez, saved the ball for Mark Grace. That'll sure be a prized possession a guy who treasures baseball history getting it here at Yankee Stadium absolutely here is Damian Miller one out nobody on that's off the foot lower part of the leg one ball one strike catchers take enough of a beating defensively perhaps his last at bat of the ball game off the left foot. So a 1 1 count. Breaking ball, strike two. Tony Holmax had a big night. 
He's on deck. He's at the plate now with two out, nobody on. First strikeout for Mendoza. Nice pitch on the outside corner, fastball. Now we talked about the lack of World Series experience for this Arizona team. But a team filled with players long on major league experience. And after a rather sloppy game last night defensively, and Bob Brenly and the Diamondbacks will tell you the elements of the weather had a lot to do with it. This Diamondbacks team doesn't appear to be phased at all by being here tonight and add to that the young right hander the 22 year old young Hun Kim who hadn't pitched in the World Series yet trying to pick up for Kurt Schilling in the eighth inning of a two run game at Yankee Stadium and striking out the side is phenomenal pitching. That's the thing his first major league appearance is at Yankee Stadium. He got through the eighth. He'll go back for the ninth and deal with a top of the Yankee lineup. Three to one, Arizona. Romero Mendoza back to the hill, ninth inning, and the first pitch down and away for ball one. Mark Grace homered back in the fourth inning to tie the game at one. The Diamondbacks now lead three to one. And again, you look up on the board. And there are a total of three hits up there for the Yankees. For the third time in this series, the Yankees have three hits. Game one, game two, and tonight. And a total of four runs as they have played four games now, this being the fourth game. That's outside three and one on Grace. And Joe Torre tonight trying a different combination with Jeter leading off. O'Neill in the number two spot, everybody moving up. Spencer in there, that's paid off. With a home run for the only Yankee run of the night. Back in the third inning. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Reaching out, grounding to Jeter. Grace is out on the tag. Mark Grace back in the fourth inning. Found the upper deck. 3-1 pitch from Hernandez. And the first base coach, Eddie Rodriguez, saved the ball for Mark Grace. That'll, I'm sure, be a prized possession. The guy who treasures baseball history getting it here at Yankee Stadium. Absolutely. Here is Damian Miller. One out, nobody on. That's off the foot. The lower part of the leg, one ball, one strike. Catchers take enough of a beating defensively. Perhaps his last at bat of the ball game off the left foot. So a 1 1 count. Breaking ball, strike two. Tony Holmax had a big night. He's on deck. He's at the plate now with two out, nobody on. First strikeout for Mendoza. Nice pitch on the outside corner, fastball. Now we talked about the lack of World Series experience for this Arizona team. Team filled with players long on major league experience. And after a rather sloppy game last night defensively, and Bob Bradley and the Diamondbacks will tell you the elements of the weather had a lot to do with it. This Diamondbacks team doesn't appear to be phased at all by being here tonight, and add to that the young right hander, the 22 year old young Hun Kim, who hadn't pitched in the World Series yet. Trying to pick up for Kurt Schilling in the eighth inning of a two run game at Yankee Stadium and striking out the side is phenomenal pitching. That's the thing, his first major league appearance is at Yankee Stadium. He got through the eighth, he'll go back for the ninth and deal with a top of the Yankee lineup. Three to one, Arizona. Derek 
Jeter represents the top of the order for the Yankees in the ninth inning. Three to one Arizona trying to go up in this series three games to one. Young Hun Kim struck out the side in the eighth inning. Jeter tries to punt. Williams with a big hit pickup. Great play one out. A quick out as Jeter tried to drop one down. Derek Jeter 0 for 4 tonight and 1 out of 15 in this series. Good idea by Jeter, better idea by Matt Williams. Looking for it all the way, not surprised. Barehanded pickup to throw out Jeter. Fine play by Williams. So one out to start the ninth inning. Paul O'Neill takes ball one. Kim, who we saw in the division series, struggled in that game three outing against St. Louis, has come in here and pitched better than he has at any point in the postseason and down the stretch. Realize that Kim struggled down the stretch for Arizona, yet Bob Brenly went to him in the eighth inning to take over for Kurt Schilling. Bob Brenly is certainly not afraid to make these decisions. Kurt Schilling didn't agree with him. Young Hun Kim rewarded Bob Brentley with a 1 2 3 8 pin. Now the count two balls and a strike on Paul O'Neill. 11 and 31 here in New York. 1 31 p.m. Thursday afternoon in Korea. On Young Hashimika to the Korean fans watching. It's a 2 1 pitch. Wow. Just missed. 3 and 1. That means hello to a fan base that used to follow every move of Chan Ho Park, and now because he's in the World Series, Byung Hun Kim has taken over. A huge fan base back in his homeland. One out, nobody on. Three balls and a strike on O'Neill. Kim with his fourth full count, facing his fifth batter. O'Neill trying to get on in front of Bernie Williams. Teams have trailed three games to one World Series. Six have come back to win the series. One of those six in a best of nine series. So in a best of seven, it's happened five times. The last time, 1985, the Royals over St. Louis. It has happened for the Yankees in their best. O'Neill breaks his bat, floats one to left, it's a base hit. And the tying run will come to the plate here in the ninth inning. That's all the Yankees needed to get one runner on and get the tying run up there. I think Joe Torre ought to think about pitch running for Paul O'Neill right now. If the Yankees don't tie it, they have no chance to win it. Ninth inning. Clay Bellinger, a much faster runner than O'Neill. Pitch ran for him in the seventh inning last night. But at the moment, the Yankees are leaving O'Neill in the game with Bernie Williams and Tino Martinez coming up. What Joe may be thinking is that if Tino Martinez gets on, then you run Bellinger. But right now, bang bang play at second base, a force play, something like that, where Bellinger makes it and O'Neill doesn't. I think you have to think about that. Bernie Williams at the plate, one out of three tonight. Facing Young Hun Kim for the first time. And taking a strike on a slider. Every time the Yankees won a game when trailing by two runs after eight innings. The 1939 World Series game four. It's a two-run Arizona lead in the bottom of the ninth. And Bernie Williams hits a foul on 
inside first. I was just going to say that I'm very surprised Mark Grace is holding Paul O'Neill on at first base. To me, you got a two-run lead. You play your first baseman back this way and guard the line. Protect against the double. If Bernie Williams hits one into position, Bob Brindley will never forget it. Here's an 0-2. Two out as Williams strikes out. That is four strikeouts for Byung Hun Kim. Looked like a slider out of the strike zone. And Williams is down on strikes. What a job by Kim. So now it's the tying run at the plate in the person of Tino Martinez, and the Diamondbacks are one out away taking a three games to one lead in this 2001 World Series. Game five tomorrow night. Messina and Batista. One on, two out. Martinez is going to deep right center field.
Kim surrendered 10 home runs during the regular season. And he just gave up the game-tying home run as Welch will come out and talk with Justice at the plate. It was 0 for 8 with 8 strikeouts in this World Series. From what we understand, Kim does not speak English. So one has to wonder how Bob Welch communicates with Kim. the home run. Now the 1-0 pitch to Justice. Good pitch on the inside corner for strike one. David Justice has been to bat eight times in the World Series. He has struck out eight times. One swing of the bat. Yankee fans forget about the first eight. Ooh. To the right side. Council slips. And the inning continues. A reminder that it's still Halloween. And it's still these Yankees at this ballpark. Still waiting to rule on hit or error. But it's Shane Spencer, who in the last two games has come up big for the Yankees with a chance to win it. Now you've got Posada, the lead runner, out at second base. That's right. It's a base hit, by the way, for Justice, his first hit of the World Series. I know your point, Joe. Why not pitch run for Jorge Posada, who is not a good base runner, and he's not fast. The Diamondbacks do not have good arms in the outfield. Steve Finley throws the best in center. Two on, two out. 3-3 three, three game of the night. Spencer, ball one. I think what Joe Torrey is thinking here is that Shane Spencer is a powerful enough hitter to move the outfielders back. And I bet you Don Zimmer just suggested something that you were thinking about. Perhaps had Bellinger pinch run. By bringing Kim in in the eighth inning. Now because of his ninth inning rally, Kim is facing these Yankee hitters for the second time. Spencer faced him to start the eighth. One ball, one strike. Don Zimmer was just looking out at Posada saying, get a big lead, get a big lead. Moving his hands outward so he can score on a base hit. Because nobody is going to think about holding Posada close at second base. No way. The 1 1. Inside to Spencer again. Spencer is facing Kim for the second time. He struck out against Spencer, rather against Kim to start the eighth. in their bullpen in case you're wondering and Rivera is still loosening for the Yankees in theirs. Winning run at second for New York. Two on, two out. Three, three in the bottom of the ninth. Full count again. He had a full count on Spencer in the eighth. Spencer struck out. Damian Miller with another visit to the mound. Now 3-2, two, two outs. The runners will be off. So the slow foot Posada is not an issue right now. You see only two teams have come back from being down by two or more runs in the bottom of the ninth to win a World Series game. The Yankees trying to do that tonight. 1911 Giants, 1929. Philadelphia A's. Two on, two out, three balls, two strikes. Runners go. 
Sprung camp out, and we go to the 10th. Five strikeouts for Byung Hun Kim. Three hits in the inning. The biggest one, a two out game tying, two run home run from Tina Martinez. Let's play on in game four. Mariano Rivera takes over for the Yankees in the 10th. It'll be Council. Gonzalez and then Cummings spot in the order he pinch ran for Durazo back in that two run eight here are the numbers for Mr. Automatic who has five saves in this postseason 24 in his postseason career he has saved 23 straight this is obviously a non save situation but in these pressure moments there has been nobody better than Mariano Rivera. Rivera worked two innings in last night's game through 29 pitches. And starts Council with strike one. Rivera faced Fred Council leading off the ninth inning last night. Make that the eighth inning last night. Council tried to bunt against him. Rivera made the play. Three three score. We're in the tenth. The 0 1 pitch to Craig Council. 92 miles per hour. It's 0 2. Joe, one of the exquisitely interesting things about this game is that in 12 minutes, Joe Torrey's contract is up with the New York Yankees. Because the postseason was pushed back a week. Right. His contract is finished at midnight. But according to Joe Torre, right, and according to all the reports that you read, the same can be said for Brian Cashman, who deserves a big contract here with the Yankees Absolutely. for the job he has done. It's only a matter of time and getting the language straight, and they'll both be signed. This council takes ball two inside, two and two. It is a, it is a a tantalizing sidelight to this ball game. Council has dropped down three sacrifice bunts tonight and fly to center. The 2 2 from Rivera. Throws it back. Another one for the pile. And Jeter takes care of Council. Rivera broke one bat last night. And he put together. A bonfire's worth during the regular season. Nobody in the major leagues breaks more bats than Mariano Rivera. Now it's Luis Gonzalez. Last night struck out against Rivera. For the final out at the top of the eighth. Danny Batista in the on deck circle. He'll bat for Cummings. One out, nobody on. Gonzalez has to step into one and comes up empty. Strike one. One out, base is empty. The 0 1 pitch. Another broken bat. That's easy. Two out. Johnny Sane was a great pitcher of Spahn and Sane and great for rain, Boston Brave days. He has said and still says that pitching is the art of fooling the hitter, not for Mariana Rivera. There is no fooling any hitter that faces Rivera. They all know what's coming. They know the speed of it. They know the movement of it. And how he continues to do it is Unbelievable. The dart at the end. How can a 170 pounder throw a ball that hard? That's what hitters have said. Danny Batista, who was a starter in game two, and 
delivered for Bob Brenly. Two for three night. Driving in a run, scoring a run. He's at the plate. It's 1998, 23 for 23 in the save department. The ERA under 0 0.7. One ball, one strike on Batista. Good work by Ramiro Mendoza for the Yankees. He goes an inning in two thirds. No hits, one strikeout, no walks. Two out, nobody on, one one. On the inside corner, strike two. The Yankees in the bottom of this tenth will have Brocious, Soriano, and Jeter. Four miles per hour. If this game drags on and realize that the Yankees have not hit much, really hardly anything in this series to this point, they got the two out, two run home run from Tino Martinez to tie it. Joe Torre goes to Rivera. No surprise here in the 10th inning. May be available for the 11th. But if this game wears on, Torre's going to have to get some outs later with pitches he doesn't typically trust in tight games. Names like Choke, Hitchcock, and Wittasek, those are the three left. You're right. If the Yankees can't score in the next inning or two, advantage Diamondbacks. Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. Danny Batista trying to deliver for Arizona. 3-3 three, three in the top of the ten. Up the middle, one hop. Good pick up by Soriano. Hitting over. Bottom of the tenth inning. Bottom two in the order. We'll start it for the Yankees. Tied at three. Back after this from your local Fox station. Tina Martinez with a two-out, two-run, game-tying home run in the bottom of the ninth. Kurt Schilling was on your right, gave way to Byung Hun Kim. So good in the eighth. Came up one run short, one out short in the ninth. And now here in the tenth, we'll deal with Brocious, Soriano, and Jeter. For the Yankees, 3-3 three, three the score. Down the left field line, if it's fair, it's over. It is foul. Down and in. Pull the foul. Joe Torrey in game five against Oakland said he could hear the crowd breathing. He could hear the crowd sigh after that foul ball. Rocious pops it up into right after giving some Carlton Fisk body language. <laughs> Leaving the home plate area. He flies to Sanders for the first down at the bottom of the tenth. And Alfonso Soriano was already hit with a game-ending home run this postseason. Doing so in game four of the American League Championship Series. Doing so became the first rookie ever to accomplish that. This game four could come down to a battle. A couple of very thin bullpens outside of a handful of pitchers as Soriano comes up empty. We talked about the three left for the Yankees with Tosic, Hitchcock, and Choke. And after Kim, who is working now his third inning and facing these hitters for the second time, then you get into names like Morgan, Witt, who hasn't appeared in this World Series, Swindell, Rohan. No balls, two strikes. Young Hun Kim on Soriano. Soriano 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out. His last time up against this right handed. One and two, and you can see Damian Miller having a tough time just catching that pitch. That was a backup slider. That's an area where a lot of pass balls come for catchers. Here's the one, two. Two and two. Up shoot. A two-run home run, by the way, hit off Kazuhiro Sasaki. 
the short reliever for the Seattle Mariners. Hit to right center field. One out, base is empty. Soriano up with Jeter on deck. Into left field, back is Gonzalez, short of the track, he pulls it in, two out. And with that, two out, nobody on in the bottom of the tenth, Jeter will bat. And these chimes mean it is November. For the first time in the history of Major League Baseball, playing the World Series during the month of November, and for very good reason. Everything pushed back one week after September the 11th, pushing the postseason back and now officially into November as Derek Jeter bats with two out and nobody on. And on the hands as the Diamondbacks have been doing to Jeter all series long, strike one. The right-handed hitters against Byung-Hun Kim. They welcome the fans here at Yankee Stadium to November baseball. The righties against Kim 0 for 7 with four strikeouts. There's a hit by the left-handed hitting Paul O'Neill. One out. The two-run home run by Tino Martinez, the lefty, with a couple out in the ninth inning that tied it. Justice has the other hit. The 0-2 to Jeter. Two. Nobody warming for the Yankees. That means Rivera will be back out there, obviously, if the game remains tied. A one two. Jeter one out of 15 in this World Series. Rivera went. Two innings last night. He threw 13 pitches in his first inning of work here tonight. If needed, he'll go back out there for the 11. Kim trying to make that happen. Jeter pops it foul off to the right out of play. Think back to 96 with the Yankees leaving here down two games to none to Atlanta. They turn to a veteran, David Cohn, to help them win game three. They trailed in the late innings in game four and got the game tying home run from Jim Leyritz, a three run shot here tonight in game four of the 2001 World Series, a game tying home run by Tino Martinez in the bottom of the ninth. Another one two pitch to Jeter. Two and two. With Jeter's ability to hit the ball to right field with two strikes, Mark Grace is about halfway at first base. But Jeter can pepper that line, particularly with two strikes. He goes to right field with two strikes on him. Three and two. Paul O'Neill on deck. He showed you Swindell getting loose in the Arizona bullpen. Two out, bases empty. Cheater down the right field line, slicing foul. Somebody has to be. Somebody will be at the end of the night. If only for one day. Three balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on, and Young Hun Kim trying to send this game to the 11th. Credit Kim with settling down enough after that deflating home run to get out of the night. Taking care of the first two here in the tenth. Jeter hits it into right. Back at the wall. Game over. Yankees win and the series is tied.
It is that time of year again. It is this city again. It is this team again. And on a cool November morning, Derek Jeter ends a long, thrilling night of baseball. Mr. and Mrs. Jeter. And the Yankees have won game four, 4-3. Four, and they've tied this World Series at two games apiece. One for the ages, Bedlam in the Bronx. Mercy. Well, we hope that Kevin Kennedy can hear us. Kevin, it's all yours. Okay, thanks, Joe. Derek, what is it? Is it a uh, Yankee mystique? It's just unbelievable the way you guys can come back. First of all, let's go back to Tio Martinez. What are you guys thinking about on the bench in the bottom of the ninth inning? Well, we always feel as though we have a chance to win a game. Once you get into the postseason, you can throw everything you've done out the window. Because every at-bat you come up, you have an opportunity to do something huge. You know, came up with a big home run. You came up, and, and you've never really seen Kim before. What are you thinking <laughs> in your at-bat? Are you thinking home run? Are you thinking, let's get this thing over with? Well, my first at-bat, I just wanted to get on base, so I tried to bunt. Matt Williams made a nice play. And in that situation with two strikes, you just try to get a hit, get a runner on for O'Neill. Kurt Schilling starting on three days rest. What was your guys' approach? Well, I mean, did you have any fear of him tonight? Did you think when it got to three to one, this game was over? No, not at all. I mean, Kurt is a gamer. He's a big game pitcher. And we knew regardless of how many days rest he had, it was going to be tough. It's tough on us again today. We we're forcing to score some runs late. All right. Uh, can you keep the emotions in check for tomorrow? Because now you've got Mike Messina going and a chance to actually win all three here and take this thing back to Arizona. Well, we need to win tomorrow night because uh, if we don't win tomorrow night, tonight's game meant nothing. Okay. Thanks, Rick. The last swing of a long night of baseball. 314, that short porch down the right field line. Derek Jeter had it measured perfectly. The Yankees celebrating here again. Mom and dad watching. The city of New York watching. And Derek Jeter has delivered for this team that keeps on doing it. Martinez tied the game in the night. And Jeter gets every Yankee to the top step with a game-ending home run. This team finds different ways to do it. They come back and stun the Diamondbacks tonight. A final in 10 innings. 4-3 Yankees with a World Series tied. Two games apiece. Back in a moment. I'm with Tino Martinez. Tino, you came up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Two outs, a runner at first base. Everybody dreams about this that ever played this game to hit a game-tying home run in this situation or a game-winning home run. Is that exactly what you were thinking about? Yes, I was. I thought the first two strikes are mine. I'm going to take a good hack and try to use the short side of the porch here and uh, get a hold of one. Um, and I got a good front pass right over the middle, and I just have to hit it pretty good. Did your eyes light up? Did you know as soon as you made contact, you tied this game up? I, I, well, I hit a ball good last night. It didn't get out. So, uh, you know, I hit it as well, as well as I could right there. I thought I had a chance and not off the wall. So, uh, I'm glad it went out. Tino, you played here for several years. You may be on the last year of your contract. Is there such a thing as a Yankee mystique after coming over here from Seattle? I mean, what is it about the New York Yankees? Hey, in the postseason, uh, anything can happen. We, we truly believe that. And um, we feel that other teams may think, you know, a game is over, and we don't. We know it's, it's not. It's, uh, you got to play all the way through. And, uh, you know, in Yankee Stadium here, anything can happen. And tonight was a big example right there. And we know that you and Luis Gonzalez played in high school together. Uh, is there anything you can say to your friend across the way? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's two to two. You know, it's, it's a long way from over. It's two to two. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can contain him. We can contain Lewis. Uh, you know, we got, we got, you know, it's going to be a long way. we got, we got two more wins to go. Okay. Uh, tomorrow you've got Mike Messina now. You pretty much accomplished what you thought you could in getting this thing even. How high are the emotions going to be? Are you guys going to have to come down a little bit to try to play some good ball early in the ball game tomorrow? Yeah, we are. We haven't been hit the ball very well. Um, you know, Kurt Schilling pitched a great game, so you got to give him credit. But um, 
Hopefully tomorrow we come out and score some runs early and let me see that settle down and pitch his game. Okay, Tino, congratulations. What a finish. Okay, Joe, back upstairs. All right, Kevin, thank you, and thanks to Tino Martinez for sticking around, except for those of you on the West Coast. Stay tuned for your late local news. For those of you in Arizona interested in continuing post-game coverage, turn to the Arizona Sports Report on your regional Fox Sports Net affiliate. We talked when we left Arizona. The Diamondbacks were up two games to none. One thing the Yankees have proven, they do not panic. They did not panic. They kept saying, wait till they get to our house. Things happen here in this house. Despite the efforts by Kurt Schilling and Byung Hun Kim, who was at times unhittable, the Yankees find a way to get it done. Martinez ties it, Jeter wins it. This series is tied two games apiece. For more information on tonight's game and for the latest information on Major League Baseball, go to FoxSports.com. For Tim McCarver, Jeannie Zelasco, Kevin Kennedy, for Michael Weissman, Bill Webb, everyone involved in bringing you this game. I'm Joe Buck. So long. Join us tomorrow night. Game 5 of the 2001 World Series beginning at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. A matchup with Mike Messina and Miguel Batista. You've been watching Fox Sports coverage of Major League Baseball. Your home for the 2001 World Series until tomorrow night, until game five. Good night and welcome.